Hey everybody, welcome back to Knowing Root Designs. I thought for this week's Marguerite Miller collage, I would do something a little different as far as starting out. Um, I looked at, I have all of the 2024 prompts. I'd love to have you stick around and I'm going to explain a couple things. It's going to be kind of like a little tutorial for everyone especially for those that may not have done any of Marguerite's collages yet. Marguerite has a very distinctive way of collaging. Um, most of us, when we start out, our style changes. We start out one way and we end up going in another direction. So that's why I would love to have you stick around, watch the video, uh, listen to what I have to say. You're either going to take something good away from this that you can use or it may not help you at all. But I just thought I, I wanted to share with you my thoughts and how I go about finding my items for her collages. So if you notice the first collages I've done they're all Daphne's diary and I would really like to try to use as many of the items and the beautiful pictures and such in here I thought about at one point doing a Daphne's diary journal but that's already being done um, and I didn't want to go down that same road so I thought it might be kind of fun to see how far I could get using the, the, the magazines that I have with Marguerite Miller. Now, you can, I'm allowing myself to take creative license, all right? It's kind of like, uh, you know, you have the prompts here. I, to me, the prompts are here to guide you, all right? And then it's all based on your interpretation, so, <clears throat> I thought what we could do is, I have gone over the list here, all of the 52. I will say, I don't know if I am going to do all, every single week this year. I do like doing them, because I know everyone out there enjoys it, and that's where I get most of my views. And I don't want to disappoint anybody, but I don't want to disappoint myself either. So, as long as I can find some cohesive items to make, I want to do pretty this year. I, I want to do surreal, but I want to do pretty as well. Um, I will continue to work with her prompts, but it's, it's going to be a um, you know, hit or miss type thing. So I just wanted to lay that out there. So <clears throat> the first thing that I do is I just take a good look at what, what is here. The first time I looked at these, I thought, how the heck are any of these going to work together? So the first one for week five is a sewing item, something your state or country is known for, an item representing a childhood memory, something ornate, something that starts with L, and then the bonus something pink. Well, I will say I was kind of turned off straight away because in one of the previous ones for 24, or no, it was 20, it was the last one, was week 52 for 23, we had to use something that starts with N. This is something that starts with L, and I'm not sure if there was something, um, somewhere it said start, something that starts with the letter I. And I thought, oh boy, I hope that's not going to be here. Something that starts with D. I know there's a letter I. Um, so I just, I was just kind of like, you know, let, let's just see how this goes. So when I got out my Daphne's Diaries today, or Daphne's, um, yeah, Diary Magazine, I started looking, and 
Um, these are all of the magazines here. I picked this one up here, okay? And, you know, and I want you to also think out of the box. And that's where I'm always telling, you know, I'm, I'm always kind of reinforcing that because I think if you think out of the box, sometimes your collages can be a bit more interesting. They can be changed up um, from what you originally were going to do. That happens a lot with me. I will get something planted in my brain and then it, it changes. So I just grabbed this one and I started going through and I'm thinking a sewing iron. I'm keeping things in my mind as to what I could use. You know, a sewing item, something my state is known for. I'm in New York State. My mind immediately goes to New York City, okay, because that is a huge part of the state. Um, you know, the capital is Albany, but nobody thinks of that. Um, they always think of the city. A lot of people, when you tell them you live in New York State, they'll say, oh my goodness, you live in the city? I'm like, nope, don't. I live, you know, four, four and a half, five hours north of New York City in the mountains. So I was kind of going, you know, just looking through and I'm thinking, you know, something ornate, something that starts with L and something pink. Well, there's plenty of pink in Daphne's Diaries books. There's this beautiful, these pink flowers here. So I'm going through and I see the embroidery here. And I thought, well, that's something, that's a sewing item because you have your needle, you have your thread, you have your embroidery hoop. Um, so I thought, hmm, maybe that is something that I, I could work with. So that's a start, that's a beginning. Here I've got a thread, a spool of thread with a needle, okay. And then I really didn't go too far after that. Now, something that, the other thing that my state is known for are the beautiful Catskill and, but mostly the beautiful Adirondack Mountains. And I thought, well, in those mountains, what do people do? People hike. And we have beautiful lakes and rivers that we have the Whitewater Derby. There's a lot of kayaking. There's a lot of hiking. Uh, people come to the mountains to snowmobile in the winter. There's still winter hiking. There's all kinds of things. So, so in those mountains, there's a lot of hiking that goes on and so on and so forth. And I know in one of these, there's some hiking people. So I, th I thought of that because I remembered from seeing it before um, when I did the picnic item. There's people in here kayaking. So I could have taken that route. Uh, but I want to go back here. And if you're going to do a collage or, or if you're just starting the Marguerite Miller, don't get discouraged because it does take a while to find prompts. Uh, I know Debbie from My Vagabond Style, she does a lot of surreal collaging and she has a ton of magazines and I know it takes her a while. And sometimes it's just hard to find and pull some of this stuff together. So I'm going to try to work with these items here, all right? Um, the embroidery. So I have that set. I'm going to set that aside, all right? Then I went, I remembered I had postcards of the New York skyline. I can't find them. So there's a great site, and I'll talk to you about that later. Um, this photo here, I'm going to give uh, a shout out. Oh, 
hold on here. I gotta get my notes. Uh, to Christian Lendy, all right? And the site I get some of my, when I really get stumped, my son told me about this site. It's called Unsplash. And you can use images. This one here is by Christian Lendy. Then I have this really pretty little, um, you can see it here, the skyline of New York. Because um, when you're at the Statue of Liberty, you can look across and you can see the gorgeous skyline. When you're driving into New Jersey, you can see the gorgeous skyline of New York. There's the Freedom Tower right there. Um, so this picture here is by Tom Coe. And I also took this off of um, Unsplash, okay? Now, the other, th so this is the city part, all right? The other thing that we are known for, this is the Cote Le Jour, and this is going to come out. Um, in a city called Rochester, New York, and you may not know this, but New Yorkers are, a lot of people do know that this is what, again, we one of the things New York is known for. They're no longer there, but Kodak Company, their Kodak, the film, the, the slides, everything Kodak was in Rochester, New York. My cousin's husband used to work at Kodak. And if I can find here, not that you... Um, Let's see. Well, it says that they are still, they are still there, but I want to see years of operation. So, I, I will have to look at that. So Kodak right here started in Rochester, New York in 1880, okay? Eastern Kodak was established in Rochester, New York in the United States of America by George Eastman, who first started making ph photographic products in 1880. After several name changes, his company became Eastern or Eastman Kodak in 1892. Um, so it just says here, uh, by the early 1990s, consumers began to prefer digital photography over film and Kodak failed to adjust to the times. The company filed for bankruptcy in 2012 and employed only 5,000 people in Rochester at that time. All right. So it was a really, for all of us New Yorkers, it really was a sad day when, Kodak no longer um, had their their business in in New York uh, in uh, Rochester. So <clears throat> this was another thing that reminded me um, that our state is known for. Okay, those two there. So now I have those. So I have my sewing item, and then I have something that my state is known for. Something with my, okay, so the other thing that I pulled, this is the, uh, this was another, I just pulled it, uh, number eight, but it's obviously the Christmas, it's the Christmas issue, and I was going through here, and I thought, well, I'm definitely going to find something ornate in here, or maybe something that uh, represents a childhood memory, all right? So I started perusing through here. And a lot of times I will do this at night when I'm sitting on the couch and hubby has the TV on and he might be watching something that I'm not crazy about, but we want to spend time together. Um, so I will just bring my magazines down, set them on the coffee table, and I will just start perusing through things. Um, and seeing if there is anything here that tickles my fancy. So, 
So when I was flipping through this, so see, again, here's another sewing item, which is a spool of thread and needle. Again, here is stitching. So that's something that maybe might work maybe a little bit better, okay, in my collage. I may end up changing that. I may not be using the other uh, item at all. So I'm going to put a bookmark in here. So this is where I say sometimes you have to think out of the box and you just have to kind of figure out um, if you see something else that maybe it might make it a little bit more interesting. Um, here you have a pair of scissors. Okay, they could be incorporated. All right. And then I came upon this, and I thought, well, this was quite pretty. We have this here. This is ornate. Um, I wouldn't use this. This would work really well with the Statue of Liberty. However, we have this image right here that you really can't do anything with. All right. Um, this I love. This is really, really pretty. However, again... I always look at the, the back side of my paper to see if there's something on here that is more interesting to me, okay? This, I could use this border somewhere, okay? So if I were if I were to cut this, it wouldn't interfere with this border. I could cut it right out of there. These are ornate. I like these, and I'm kind of leaning towards these because of the Statue of Liberty's crown. She has the same, okay? She has the same spikes that are somewhat on there, and we could adorn her with these really pretty um, pieces here. So that's one way to look at this. And like I said, I want I really want to do this with you this way this week because I think it's important. A lot of times I'll just have everything cut. I'll have everything out, um, ready to go. And you may not know, I try to talk through the, the thought process, but sometimes it, it just doesn't work. And now I'm just kind of looking through here. I don't want to make it a Christmas collage, but I'm just looking through here to see if there's something that represents, that brings me back, even though this is over in Europe, um, my childhood something that I could relate to, but I'm not going to go that, down that route because I'll, I'll tell you why. I already have it picked out. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous, that gingerbread? Um, so I'm going to set this aside, and there really isn't anything. There's not too much pink in here. Now, the one thing that I did see that I thought of using, and I, I had bookmarked this, these dolls right here, kind of, sort of, they remind me, I had a baby doll when I was little, Thumbelina. So if you're my age, I'm sure you probably remember Thumbelina. She had almost like a, a body stocking style body, a very simple smock dress. She was the softest thing ever, and... My, my Thumbelina was just about this size. It was a little bit bigger. Um, so when I see these dolls here, I, th I think of Thumbelina. But I'm not going to go with her because I just can't envision the dolls with the Statue of Liberty. Um, so I'm going to set this aside because I believe that I'll be cutting these here. Okay. And then... My something that reminds me of childhood that I thought because I'm using the statue and she's tall and straight, all right. Um, tulips, whenever I see tulips, my mother had two absolutely beautiful tulip gardens in our backyard, and a lot of my pictures of when I was two years old, um, she has me sitting outside and I either have a tulip in my hand or my dad gave me a tulip that I would be smelling of or I'd be bent over smelling her tulips. So I'm going to use a tulip and I'm going to see if I can find a pink one because my mom had beautiful pink tulips. 
um, in her garden. They were just the ordinary um, pink tulips. So I thought I would look through, this is an entire tulip book. So I thought I would look in here first. But I'm not finding very many closed up. And I want something that's painted. I want that muted, muted look. I may have one already cut out because I, I have taken quite a few um, pictures out of here and fussy cut them. So I may have to go to my drawer and take a look. But I want the same color pink that my mom had in her garden. And I may not be able to find it in here. These look like they're all variegated. They look like they're all variegated. Let me check the front here. Let's see, these are the tulips that I remember. They, of course, these were, those had a real pretty edge. My mom's were just the traditional old-fashioned tulip. And I'm not going to find it in here, so I'm going to look in my, uh, where I've done um, quite a few fussy cutting, and I'm going to see if there is a pink one in there. And if not, I have another book that I can, I can look at. So I will be right back. So I went through my all my fussy cut flowers. I've got things in here. I didn't find anything. I went through uh, another book. I went through my flora uh, book here. I've got all kinds of flower books. So I found these here. I found a, these two uh, pink tulips. So I believe I have everything now. Um, and again, I'm changing out because I have a, a new idea. Uh, for these flowers here. So I'm changing out and I'm going to be using spools of thread. I have this one to choose from and then I have, let's get this out of the way here, and then I have these two to choose from. All right. So I am going to make the cuts. I'm going to get things fussy cut uh, you don't need to stick around and watch me do that. I'm going to try to <clears throat> take this and I'm going to try to make a raw edge on it. I may do that with you um, just by taking some water and bringing it across and then I'll just peel this off here. But I'd like to have a raw edge on here just because the way this is kind of in the clouds or the smog or whatever. Uh, so when I get everything cut out and we're all ready to build a collage, I will be back. All right, so I did the fussy cutting and I have a tulip here. Okay, this one has the little raindrops on it and I have a tulip here. Okay, which are pretty pretty, that's my pink. I cut out the spools of um, thread right here goes this I guess it goes this way I'm not sure I forget how oh it goes this way because the thread is hanging down okay then this one and then I have these little images here so I'm gonna set these aside because I don't want them to get wet I still have my photo over here of the Manhattan skyline okay and my little Kodachrome then what I did was, okay, I took out one of my pages that I'm collaging on. And I'm just going to set this here and make a couple little marks, okay? And I'm going to, because I want to take, I want to feather this up here. So I think I will, and if this doesn't come out the way I think it should come out, I can always make another copy 
and redo it, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm just going to make a mark there, 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 and there. So I'll know exactly where to. I have my little wet, I call this a little wet pen. You should have seen me trying to get the water to come out. This little plug was in there to stop. That's the little sealer to stop it. But do I know that? No. Just trial and error. So I'm going to get this nice and wet along here. And then I can just tear this off. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I think you can see that. I have to pull this out. I think this is... I don't use these very much, so you can see I really don't know <laughs> what I'm what I'm doing here. And we're just going to pull this because I just want this to be um, what did I call it before? Um, feathered. I just want that to be feathered. And hopefully these little watermarks won't So maybe I had maybe I had to turn this the other direction. I don't know. All I know is the water didn't come out when I had it in. And now I have to kind of keep pulling it down and out. And this is a little bit heavier paper. Um, so I want to make sure that it's nice and wet here. And you can see this is a photo style paper. So you can see when I put too much water on, it kind of changed that there. So I think, and that's the other thing I'm gonna be doing this year. I'm gonna teach myself much more mixed media because I'm, it's something new to me and I'm not familiar with it at all. So again, and it's just all trial and error. I mean, as far as me. Because like I said, this is, this is all new to me. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. And they can probably do it better. <laughs> um, so I'm going to look at my paper here. Because I lost my mark. So I'm going to bring it in right about here. And I know the, the wetter you have your paper, the easier it is to tear. Um, that I do know for a fact. So I got this here. All right. I'm going to leave that be because my luck, I would, oh, and I think that'll be just fine. That'll be just fine like that. Now, um, I think what I will do over here on the sides here, um, maybe I'll run a little bit of black and white washi tape in the background. Uh, something just subtle. This is more of a, like a blue. I don't know if I want to do this. 
but I think it might be kind of fun to run a little bit of Take that little bit of pink out of there. Now I'm going to run it all the way around the side. I think that'll look nice. So we'll get this on here. This is one of those tapes where um, you know you get it and I love black and white washi tape um, but you get it in a with a bigger one and then I'm gonna use this up and I'm gonna miss it. <laughs> And I probably won't be able to find the little small part of it, or the little, the little mini one again. Okay, so we have that there, and this looks kind of cool um, with the black stripes going that way. So I think we can get this down, okay? Um, I have nothing to cut into or cut under or around. So we're going to get our L down, which is Lady Liberty. And then I think what I might do is turn this a little bit like that so the edges are a little bit roughed up. There we go. Okay. So that's just kind of roughed up there a little bit just for a little more texture. Okay. So now we have, and I didn't leave, um, I could do it behind my Kodak thing because I do want to leave. I'm going to cut this here. get this cut out. Okay. So we have our little prompts here. Okay. Um, so I think the next thing I will do is I'm just wondering if I should, I can do one of two things, all right, um, which might be kind of fun. And this is where, I'm going to bring this down a little bit, and this is where, again, you start thinking of different ideas. So what you thought of initially just may not work out. I have this really nice skyline here. I could always cut that out and put that along here, all right? which I may do. 
my first thought was to use the Kodak and put this, I could still, well, I could, I don't know, I could put it in over here. I'm almost tempted, just the way uh, the Statue of Liberty here is fading out, is to take and fussy cut this because it's at the perfect angle and put this at the base of her, okay? That's, that's one thing. Again, I could take, I could either do it vertical or I could do it horizontal and I could put this somewhere. But I may not, to, may not need to use that uh, because this, the Lady Liberty and the New York City skyline definitely represents um, our state, my state. Um, now, what I didn't, what I should have done is I should, I wanted to tuck these behind her and I was a little overzealous and I'm just wondering if um, I could cut through here because I have extra pages of these and I could just back it with that. So again, I was thinking of cutting, tucking the this behind her, okay? And I have this small one. Um, let's just kind of see here. Let's play with this. Could put one, I'd like to put one behind her hand. And then Or behind her arm and then I could have the other one coming out down around here and then how I'm going to use these is I'm going to make these into vases so again it's going to depend on where we place the flowers where we place the um, tulips so you can see when you do collage art how things change. Uh, you know, you'll go from one idea and then you get looking at something and then you decide, no, I think I'm going to do it this way. Here I'm just cutting a little spot in the top where it would normally have a little hole, but obviously I'm cutting, a little, cutting it a little bit bigger. And then if we're going to use this as a vase, this is going to be coming up out of, this will be coming up out of the um, thread like that. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. And I know I said this was down. I guess, yeah. I'm just going to take a little bit of this off. I don't want to put any um, distress ink on this, so I'm just taking a little bit of this white off because I want just the thread on there. I don't mind if it's around the needle a little bit. That's good. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to cut. This one doesn't have to be so big. Okay. And we will put this right down in there like that. So I think what we'll do now is we're going to position where and how we want these tulips, okay?
So again, we have to stay mindful of um, I can always cut this out and around and this could be we either you're either going to have to decide if you want your if you want your statue or whatever your main focal point is in the back if you want that in the foreground or you want it in the background and we could do something like this where that is kind of this one might be better to tip to the to the side just the weight of the the weight of the um, tulip as well will make it tilt in a small vase such as this okay so we could have that like that if you wanted to we could have it overlapping something like this this could be straight on something so it's like she's coming up out of the tulip all right which I kind of like that okay kind of like that all right so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this glued down because I I do like that um I'm just wondering and again you have to think how many pieces do you want in your collage all right um, thinking if I tuck that behind there I'd still kind of like to see what this would look like at the base of her so um, let me cut this out and we'll come back and try one other form of collage. So I have the skyline all cut out. I used my X-Acto knife and I didn't trim too um, much around the inside in case I have the, the flowers here. So now you just kind of have to look at the overall composition. I don't want her, I don't want it up high like this because you can't make out the, the separation here with her robe, her sleeve hanging. I want that, kind of want that showing. So <clears throat> if I put that there, I mean, my options are to use maybe one, one flower. I like the two. Um, I'm just going to cut this a little bit on an angle. So when I turn it, it kind of goes like that. Um, but again, I don't, I want, if you're going to do a collage, you want everything kind of merged together. So I really, 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 really like how this looks here with, I'm going to use this, but I really want to get this here. Um, because I just think this looks really cool having her, having this tulip come down and around like this with her. Um, so we're going to put that there. And I'm going to tack this down because I don't want this to move. I have it in place. And I'm going to put just a dab there. 
all right? Just enough to hold that in place because that's just about where I want that. Then um, we've got this here. And I kind of want, now these are going to have to be a little bit closer together. So do I want them, I might want them like this, where this thread and the needle and all this can kind of overlap here, all right? Then, I can put this here. I have to cut this down a little bit. I think I have to lower this right down just a tad. Because I want that to come up a little bit more. Kind of bending out like that. And then all I need to do is just clip this a little bit here. Um, I need some small little scissors to clip this here. Okay, I'll get that off of there. I want that needle in front. Kind of like that. So these are somewhat overlapped and we'll do it where the string is there, the thread, and then we can turn this one. So I want to get this here, just a little dab right there to hold that in place. Okay. The trick is going to be getting this all glued down properly, but I think it'll be okay. And I want to kind of raise that up and turn it. I'm just trying to decide if I want the, the petals touching and overlapping. I think that's good. Because in, realistically, you're going to have a shorter stem if it's in a, you've got a big head on this tulip, and if your stem was too long, it would be knocking, it would be tipping over the um, the little thread here, the little spool of thread. So you kind of have to look at it in a, I know it can be, you know, surreal, but if you want, want it to sometimes make some sort of sense, just think of it, you know, how How it would really work in in real life okay and so here I'm going to just get this down I want this in here but I think we're going to have I want that freedom tower to show because that is very important so I think what I will do I'm gonna rip this seeing that that's frayed on that side And we're going to get this I think that would be good right like that okay I don't want to put any A little tiny bit. Okay. We'll put that there like that, okay? And 
like that. I'm just going to cut this off. I don't want that brown on there. So I hope that um, I hope this video has helped you if you are either just starting out or you know I just want everybody to really kind of look at the prompts differently. Like I said, I'm going to go and make I'll have a playlist of other gals and I'm sure you already watch them. Um, who do work similar to this. And, you know, I'm definitely still learning. And I love watching everyone because everybody is so different. And you really do, um, you do get your own style. And... It's like anything else. If you look at someone else's work, you can pretty much tell whose work it is. Um, Because you do, you all get your own You'll get your own style, and it's going to evolve. Um, I look back, I mean, when I first started my Marguerite Miller, I took everything literally, you know, like a stamp and a ribbon. And then as I started growing and becoming more um, confident in myself, you're, you're going to start to experiment a little bit more and you're going to play more and you're going to try new things. And if they work, they work. If they don't, if you're not sure, if you have some images that you really like, make photocopies of them, play with the photocopies. Um, and then you can, you know, paper is paper. Even if the, the images aren't great and they, you know, you make photocopies of them and they're terrible, it's just for placement and contents. And you can always, um, you know, change it up. You can do something a little different. You can, it, it doesn't have to be set in stone. Okay, so... We have that, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I want to, I don't need the big one. I don't want the, I could put the big one up here. It would look all pretty and festive and stuff like that. I'll use this for something else. I'm not going to use the Kodak um, because I think, again, the New York State, it's a great representation of Manhattan um, and, you know, the skyline here and the Statue of Liberty. So, I mean, some people may do something like this and that's great um, I mean I like that that's something different and then you could do something like that all right I don't want that so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here and I'm going to I fold it in half but I'm going to cut it um, I'm going to cut that in half, and I may trim it up a little bit, and I'm going to have this coming out of her torch. So I'm going to take this.
and that will be the little ornate piece. And I think maybe what I might even do is just take this and put a little tiny, I'll put a very small, I can find my exacto knife. Oh, it's way over here, out of harm's way. I will put a very small little slit in here, okay. And then I can take this and just kind of pop it see if I can pop that right down in behind here go a little bit more and I'm just kind of poking it I'm not really ripping and tearing it there. And then that way it does look like it's coming right out of her um, torch. So I'm just going to put some glue right there. And I just kind of want to keep these I don't want to glue these down all the way. There, like that. So, something that I thought was going to give me a really hard time this week. Um, I really, really like. I was not happy um, when I read these when I read these prompts, because I'm thinking, oh dear, how how am I going to make this work? So again, um, a sewing item is our thread, okay, needle and thread, something uh, your state or country is known for, uh, New York City and Lady Liberty, which is something that starts with L. Something ornate is this little item I got out of Daphne's. Um, diary magazine and cut down for her torch um, and then an item representing a childhood memory that would be the tulips that my mom used to grow so that is it for week number five I'm going to put that in my my February part here I have all of my um, I have all my January ones right here and then I'm moving right on over here to February so we're going to put that right in there like that and um, yeah that is it so I really hope you and like you liked this uh, tutorial this week I just I really wanted to do a tutorial with you at, so you could actually see you know the books the images um, the whole thought process and how it changes and evolves when you think you have one, uh, you know, you're going to have one idea and then all of a sudden it changes. And things that you originally pull and then you don't use, um, different ideas come to you. So I'd love to have you give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Um, let me know if you are going to try um, some art collage uh, or collage art such as this and um, yeah I hope everybody had a great time thank you for sitting with me around my craft table and I will see you in my next video all right everybody have a great day bye bye